all right so now it's time to add some functionality to our game so the first things first we want to be able to get the button clicks from the side so first we're going to check for button clicks from the mouse pad or the mouse so how we're going to do this is we are going to create a while loop and what this while loop will do is it will go through these existing buttons here and we are going to add an event listener on each of these buttons so that when one of those buttons is clicked it runs a function so to do this in javascript to start a while loop we need to start a default value which is called I usually say conventional as i so we say let i equals zero so let i equals zero and then next we are going to use the javascript we say let number of drums be equal to document the query selector all and that in curly braces and we're going to put that dot drum so what what does that mean it simply means inside here all the all the buttons with the class or any element with the class drum is going to we're going to target all those buttons and how many of them are there one two three four five six seven so there are seven of those buttons with the class drum and with in javascript to get the number of those drums we add the dot length method so it's going to return a number and that number is going to be seven now we're going to start the while loop and the while loop says if i is less than number of drums which is definitely less than drums we want then to do a document or query the selector all for button so now we are going to select each of the buttons and then we put them with a the bracket i here so what this does here is for the value the first one will be zero so the index position here is zero so it's going to select the first button here so this is going to be the first button so after the first iteration the next iteration is going to select the second button select the third button select the fourth button t which is the last button with that class drum so and then we want to now add an event listener to all of those buttons whenever they are clicked so we're going to do an add event listener click and we want to run a function called handle clicks but we haven't created the function yet so let's create the function below so the function name is gonna be handle click and inside the function we are going to say let's button in HTML equals to this dot in HTML so what does this mean if we look into our code it says this is the letter w so what we are just saying is that if it says button in at the hm because it this dot in at the hm so this in javascript simply means the response from the from the event means when the when the button gets clicked javascript is able to handle the result or the response from that click using this method called this so we take this this it's like you're accessing the attribute of that click event you can check for the, the the mouse event you can check the position of the element but in this case we want what the inner html so for the first button that we have selected meaning that this dot inner html here is going to be the letter what the letter w so that is what is going to be inside this button you will soon understand why we are doing this now next thing is we are going to create a function which is called make sound function and what does the make sound function do it takes in the parameter button inner html and that button inner html is the letter which is going to which is a string and we are going to make sounds based on the letter so if it's w we want that even when we click on the keyboard w the computer the the, the yes the computer or the website should understand that this is w and it should play the equivalent sound so this make sound function is to play those sounds we had in the final version now the last function we will create is button animation and what button animation does is anytime you click the button it gives it that different animation like if you look in the final version look in our final version if i click w you see what happens with the button 
it makes these cool sounds behind you see so I just reduce the volume so we don't get distracted too much because the sounds are really loud but if I increase it a bit you hear them yeah so you hear the sound so you see this animation gets to be added onto each of those buttons all right so let's go further to the next step so the next step of we are going to continue is uh, how to check for the keyboard press okay so now it's time for us to check for the check to check the keyboard press so how do we check for the keyboard press so we want that anytime we press any letter on the keyboard it's supposed to let javascript detect that we have actually pressed the button before actually adding any functionality so first up we want to create a document that we add an event listener to the whole web page so this document here simply just refers to that site and anything we add we add an event listener there we put the key press you see so this key press here is an attribute for keyboard presses so anytime you press any button on the keyboard it's going to indicate in the browser that the keyboard has been pressed so we are going to create an anonymous function and we are going to put in the event so for you to understand what is actually go on, going on let us just console.log that event okay so let's control the log the event and if we open into our web browser we are going to see how it actually works so if i open my web browser and i try to all right so if you notice uh, my web my web browser is like it's unresponsive and that is because we were running the while loop we did not increment the while loop so i'm so sorry for that because if you notice i is equal to zero and i will always be less than and the while loops can run infinitely so as long as the condition is true it will keep on running so what we have to do is we just increment we put i plus plus so this is going to increment the value of i so that when you anytime it runs continuously when it reaches seven it's going to stop so if I increment I and then I'm going to dispose the live server and then start a new one and boom everything there is working so if you remember we already created this function and we wanted to see how this console.log event works so if I go back to the browser and if I right click and I click inspect and I open my console anytime I hit any letter on my keyboard it's supposed to show me a console.log message so if I hit A oh sorry I need to tap this window first and then I hit A you see it shows a keyboard event so it's trusted true and now we have this value which is called the key so it knows it is A I've pressed and the code is called key A so these are the different attributes that can be accessed from it so let's just try out one so if i say uh console.log uh, event.key so if i go to my browser into my code so i say event.key so the next time i'm going to run that site anytime i press a letter it's going to show me the letter i pressed so if i refresh it's automatically refreshed so if i press a you see so b c d e f g h i and things like that so on and so forth so that is what that event does so we are going to use that event to look through the different buttons and play the equivalent sounds based on the letter that was pressed i hope that was clearly understood all right so we can remove this console.log uh, event or key we don't need it any longer now so first of all we are going to add that make sound function and that make sound function is going to take that event the key like we just explained so it's going to take in the key that was pressed on the keyboard and it's going to send it to the make sound function for checks so that it's going to check if it's w if it's a if it's s and it's going to play equivalent sound now the next function we are going to add this is the button animation and that button animation is going to also take an event.key 
so that anytime we click one of those buttons it's going to add that nice animation that uh, animation that shows that the button has been clicked all right now the next step now is actually to make this function the make sound remember up here we did the same make sound button animation make sound button animation and we haven't actually created those functions so let's create the first one uh, make sound function function and sorry function and there's gonna be a make sound and it's going to take in a parameter called key and let's create a second function which is gonna be button animation and it's going to also take a parameter called key inside now let's work now with the make sound function what first are we going to take so there is a method we're going to use in javascript called the switch statement so what does the switch statement do the switch statement takes in a parameter and it checks if the conditions are met it's going to run the command and it and if it's not met it's going to break now there's a difference between a switch and an, an if statement if statements they check if a condition is true or false if it's true or false and they carry on a certain function and you can continue to use else if else if else if but it makes the code look so cumbersome so javascript has the switch method which makes things a lot more easier and a lot more cleaner so if i use the switch statement and it's going to take in a parameter of key as well and inside we are now going to define the different cases where we want to check this parameter this key parameter so case one so the first case is if the key is equal to what letter w so this key is going to be coming from this event listener key press and it's going to check if the letter the user pressed was actually w now if it is w we want it to carry out a certain function so we're going to say let crash crash is equal to now we're going to use the new which is going to new method in javascript that is like defining a new media file audio so we have specified what new file i want to create and it's an audio and we're going to take now from the sound directory which is our sound here as you can see and we're going to select forward slash crash crash dot mp3 good and then in javascript to actually play these sounds we just simply do a crash dot play so it's a function in javascript so if, we, if i hover over the play it says loads and starts playback of a media resource so the media resource is this audio object we have created here so we are going to do this for the rest of the other cases which is for w a s d j k l so i'm just going to copy this but before that i'll just we need to add the break statement so it's going to break here oh it's supposed to be in line so it's going to be break and why we are adding the break is because if it checks for the case of w if it's not w then it should not it should forget about doing anything here it should just keep to the next line of code so the next case we're going to copy that So we got all of the cases ready and done so we have the make sound we have the case for w case for a case for for s case for d case for j case for k case for l so we have everything there so 
I'm I'm gonna give some spacing so you see things clearly. So let me give some spacing here. It's not like necessary, but I'm just doing it so you can see everything clearly. So everything here. So this is what happened. So if it was the letter W, so W will be passed in into the switch statement. And if it's W, it's going to play this crash audio. If it was A, it's going to play this audio. If it's going to be S, but if it's any other letter apart from the cases we have listed here, it's not going to do anything, obviously, right? All right, so the last step of this uh, video is for us to add that button animation, you see? So if we uh, go to the button animation, so first of all, we want to get all the class. We want to get the class of the working button. Okay? So we're going to say uh, button animation goes to current key. Not key. Current key. Because anytime the button will be clicked, it's going to be the same key we are working on. And what we want to do is we we'll say let active button be equal to a document dot a query selector and inside the query selector we are going to put a dot and which is going to be a plus does the current key so what are we what are we saying here so what does the document the query selector dot current key do so what does it what it does is if it, it comes here anytime a button is clicked or a mouse event uh, a keyboard event is pressed like a is pressed it's going to grab everything of this button it's going to grab everything inside this button you see so that we can be able to add that animation class into it you get the point to see it clearly let's just console.log dot log and we're going to console.log active button and we're going to console.log also the current key you see so let's open our web page and see it so my console is too open now let's just forget about this let me clear everything here so you see everything clearly now if i click on any of the buttons let me increase the volume a bit so if i click w it says okay it says current is not defined oh so i probably spelled that wrongly in line 66 uh line 66 it's current key right it's working so oh line 12 actually so it's line 12 oh okay I don't still see the arrow. Mm. Current is not defined at button animation line 66 at HTML the handle click. Oh, okay. So it meaning in here. Okay, so let me open that back. All right, good. So it's working now. I don't have any. I don't understand why it wasn't working, but it seems it was a kind of glitch. So everything is fine now. So if you see, anytime I click any of the the buttons, you see it creates. This is the current. Uh, let me open the code. You see clearly. So this is the active button. So the active button is the first HTML element it grabs. The current key is the letter that was pressed. So you see W, and I press W, it creates it. You see button class W drum that, and then A, S, D. So even if I press with the keyboard, it does the same thing. This is K, and this is L. All right. So I hope you understand how. This thing works so let me clear back my console 
and then I'll open back to the code. So we can wipe this line of code here. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add a class to that active button. So active button, we want to do a dot add dot class list dot add and we are going to add that css class we just created which is the pressed so if you come to our, our css cl class we have this press so this is going to get added into this html so anytime a button is created uh, the button is pressed the javascript is automatically going to add this class called pressed okay now let's go back to index the js now we want to set a timeout for the animation so that the animation doesn't stick to it because if i open the browser and we reload it's reloaded if i press w you see the the w remains stuck it doesn't the animation doesn't leave it so we have to set a timeout to those animations so that anytime the button is clicked those animations get removed after some time so if i go back to the code that can simply be done using the javascript set timeout function so inside what we'll do is we'll create a set timeout function set timeout it's actually a function on its own and then inside it's going to take in a function of timer off you see and inside this timer off function we want to remove that active button a class list dot remove and what are we going to remove we're going to remove the press class so after a certain time we want to remove this press class and to do that we have to specify the time so just after the curly braces of the handler function we can see the timeout timeout is 100 millisecond so 100 millisecond after 100 millisecond we want that class to be removed so when you click on it it's not going to remove it immediately but after 100 milliseconds it's going to remove it and i think we are done with the code so we can say end of code so let's run everything now we are done and let's run the final version so we refresh everything is good now you see the animation gets removed after 100 milliseconds it's quite fast though so you can play along with the values so if i play along with the values i like change it to 1000 milliseconds which would be one second so it will take a little bit more time you see so it takes like one second to remove the animation but i think we'll leave it there at 100 millisecond so i hope you enjoyed the tutorial of how to build your own drum kit game and please i want you to be subscribed to my youtube channel so that we can continue to follow up updates on this type of videos without further ado see you guys in the next video thanks for watching